What's up guys, today is going to be API Wars part two of three, how to build an API with Golang. If you guys wanna see my comparison between a Golang API, a Wayscript API, and a Django API, see the video up there. Otherwise, give this video a like and subscribe and let's get to it. Cool, so first I'm gonna show you guys how to get the web server running and then I'm gonna show you how to connect to and read out of MySQL. So first you wanna make a package name and define some imports. We wanna import FMT log and net slash HTTP so that we can serve. And then we need to create a function main. Uh, in this function main, all we're going to be doing is uh, writing in this handle requests function. And this handle request function is going to help route our traffic to different pages. <clears throat> so the function that we'll need First, we'll just write up a home page function. So we can say HTTP dot handle func. If we pass in nothing, then we want to send it to the home page function. And our function home page can just, it'll take uh, an HTTP dot response object. Oh, dot response writer. And then a pointer to an HTTP dot request. And then we can just say fmt.fileprint home page hit. And we need to say this with this w because it's the HTTP response writer object. Cool. And then one other thing we have to do is we need to log.fatal and we need to start the HTTP server. And the way we'll do this is write http.listen and serve. at port 8081 and then no because no other arguments so let's see if this looks good sweet and you want to allow access so you can write to this port and then it should say Hunter. cool so that works cool and now to finish this up we're going to have to add in another page to our handle request which will be user info so if someone goes to slash user they can now go to our user info page so this will just be another func and this can start as user info and just say user info page hit but then we want to add in reading from sql and then decoding this to json and putting it out like an api would so i've pre-written these structs but we're going to use this to decode the information coming from SQL because it'll be in this format and then we can output it like this because we only care about the first name, the last name, the email, and the birthday. So we're going to need to add a couple modules to do this. We need to add database SQL, uh, a GitHub SQL driver, driver github.com slash go SQL driver slash MySQL. So if you've never used this before, you're going to have to write go get and then github.com slash go SQL driver slash MySQL into the console. And then encoding slash JSON. And go get is kind of like the equivalent of pip install in Python. It'll allow you to install that driver. So now that we have these three imports, we can write up the body of our user info. The first thing we're going to want to start with, and let's just make sure that this is running correctly. I'm going to need to not use this. So first let's check this is running. Cool. It looks like it is. So now that it looks like this is running correctly, we can go here. It'll say that we can start implementing the body of this function. So to connect to a database, you need to say database error equals sql.open mysql and then the format that you'll have your user password and database connection in will be first your user which minus test user your password minus password not too secure and then you'll connect to your endpoint which is tcp endpoint and this will be at um at its port 3306 and then it'll be at the database name mine's test db so i'm gonna fill in my endpoint really quick and i'll be right back five minutes later 
cool. So after you have your database filled in, you just need to check if there's an error. If there's not and you're connected, then you can just say panic error. Um, you can just say that you successfully connected. T dot print ln successful connection. Yay. And then you can say defer dot db dot close because otherwise you'll get errors keeping the database open. So let's just see that we have this successful connection. Great, so it looks like this did work. So now that this is working correctly, we can query our database, get the information we want, and then output it as an API. So after that works, and let's just see when we hit this endpoint, great successful connection. So let's keep going. We want to write a query in here. So our query is going to be, <coughs> um, it can be written the exact same as it would be in SQL. So select star from users where email is equal to, and this is where I use the request pointer. It'll be r.url.query.get at the parameter, and I'll just call our parameter user. So we can say user equals, so user question mark, user equals, and then the email um, plus this and then a close parenthesis. Sweet, so now we have our query and we can query our database by saying results error equals db.query at q. So now we need to iterate over our result object. So for results.next, let's do some quick error checking. If error is not equal to nil, panic error.error. So now first we're going to decode all of our information into this decode user struct. <clears throat> so to do this, um, I'm first going to make this decode user struct and then I'm going to say that error is equal to results.scan at user.id. So after I iterate over my queried object and put it all into my user variable, I can then create the JSON that we're going to output. So now I'm going to create a reference to my user object where my first is equal to user.first, my last is equal to user.last, my email is equal to user.email and my birthday is equal to user dot birth month plus user dot birthday cool and then we're going to use something called json dot marshall to turn this in from a struct to valid json so we're going to say that the error is equal to json.marshall of our user and if error is not equal to nil then panic error.error otherwise we can fmt.fprint our byte string fmt.fprint our byte string Cool, so let's see if this works. Cool, so let's see if for this query we can get an output. Awesome, we do. And if we did some other user, like Sky, we could get a different output. Great, so I hope this made sense, guys. Golang's a little different, so if you have any questions about this code, I'm going to put it on my GitHub. But just let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I really appreciate you guys watching this video, and if you like, please like and subscribe and become a patron on my Patreon. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Peace.
to get in the box when they watching out for cops. You 